enjoying. We have been enjoying a series with uh, Dr. Bolo, Intense Prayer or Emergency Prayer. If you're here for the first time, you're so very welcome to this place, to this space where we are truly hearing a message from on high, led by Dr. Bolo as we explore a series called Intense Prayer or Emergency Prayer. Every day I've been sharing a little insight on Dr. Bolo. As I mentioned, he has a bio that is a mile long. So allow me to just share this morning that Dr. Bolo is really passionate about ministry and he continues to expand his knowledge and will soon hold certificates in, in marriage, um, sorry, as a marriage and enriched counselor, as a um, group and individual crisis counselor, and as a church growth as in church growth and evangelism. So he's someone who's forever desiring to learn. And this morning we want to invite him once again to speak to our hearts, to share with us the message that the Lord has put upon his heart this morning. Dr. Bolo, it is your time. Thank you so very much uh, for Thank you so very much for those kind words, and we want to bless the name of God for his mercy, for his grace, for his kindness, wherever you're watching from, wherever you're listening from this morning. We want to say you are welcome. We pray that you experience the power of prayer, intense prayer, emergency prayer, and, and you just experience the blessing of God. There are so many testimonies and that we, we know we have God's deliverance and his grace, his mercy, his power, his healing, his, his forgiveness, all of that. Today, I, I, we have a word from the Lord, and I pray that this word will lead us higher to the throne of God. If you have your Bible, stand with me into Esther chapter 4. Esther chapter 4, that's where we're going to spend our time today, Esther chapter 4. I was talking to, speaking to a colleague of mine, a good friend, a brother of mine, as we were talking, we began to go over different passages about intense prayer or emergency prayer, and this came and this came along, and we and we and we decided this would be a good message for tonight through divine inspiration. Amen. When you get there, what the preacher say, Amen. Thumbs up wherever you are. Amen. 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 Bible says this. The Bible says when Mordecai verse one when Mordecai perceived. That all was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sock clothes. And, and the Bible says he tore his clothes and put on sock clothes and ashes and went out into the midst of the city. He cried out with a loud voice, with a loud and bitter cry. He went as far as from the front of the king's gate, for no one might enter the king's gate clothed with sock clothes. And the Bible says in verse 3, and in every and in every province where the king's, king's command and decree arrived, there was great mourning among the Jews with fasting and weeping and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. Are you there with the preacher? Verse four, so Esther's maid, Esther's maid and the eunuch came and told Esther and the queen was deeply distressed. Then she sent a garment, then she sent garments to the, to clothe Mordecai and take his sock clothes away from him, but he would not accept them. Then Esther called Hatak, one of the king's eunuch, and the Bible says, <clears throat> whom he has appointed to attend unto her. And she gave him a command concerning Mordecai to learn what and why this was. So Hatak went out to Mordecai in the city square that was in the front of the king's gate. And Mordecai told him all that has happened to him. And the Bible says, and the sum of the money that he man had promised to pay into the king's treasures to destroy the Jews. Verse eight, <clears throat> the Bible says, he also gave him a copy of the, of the written decree for, for their destruction, which was given as Shushan, that he might show it to Esther and explain it to her, and that he might command her to go into the king, to the king to make supplication to him and plead before him 
for her people. So Hata returned and told Esther the words of Mordecai. The Bible says in verse 10, then Esther spoke to Hatak and gave, this is what the Bible says in verse 11, and gave him a, verse 10, and gave him a command for, 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 for Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's province know that any man or woman who goes into the inner court to the king who have not been called, he has but one law put all to death except the one to whom the king holds out the golden scepter, that he may lay, yet I myself have not been called to go into the king these 30 days. So the Bible says, so they told Mordecai Esther's word. Verse 13, as we continue, the Bible says, and Mordecai told them to Esther, do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than all other Jews. For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place, but you and your father's house will perish, have mercy. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. We're gonna stop here. Our theme tonight on an intense prayer. Our theme tonight on an intense prayer. You have been called at such a time like this. Amen. As this. You have been called. Father, speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Esther, the book of Esther, is a historical book. King Zesis. The second is a historical book. And the amazing thing about the book of Esther, what, what, what is fascinating in the book of Esther is that a refugee, a foreigner, have risen to the top level in the kingdom. She is the new queen. You know the story. You know how she became queen. She is the new queen. And for a while, she's enjoying the, law, the luxury of being a queen. The Jews are having fun until this man, hey man, had a problem with Mordecai, Esther's uncle who would not bow down to him. And, 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 and you, you, you gotta look at this story because this story is amazing. I can preach this story from so many ways. I, 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 but, but tonight, we honor the team intense prayer. One thing we must learn tonight is that we have been called at such a time as this one in earth's history. We have been called at such a time as this time in world's history. Mm. This is a time to remember. Uh, in the history of the world, when all the nations, economy collapsed because of a virus, when the death toll around the world had elevated, when in America alone over 700 plus thousands, half thousand have died, and yet people are still dying. When around the world people moon loved ones, even now, we have been called at such a time as this time. Hey. If there was nothing we learned tonight, is that we have been called to intensify our prayer. All of our prayers should be an emergency prayer. In other words, our prayer should be prayer that comes from the heart, that speaks from the heart. Esther is enjoying the queenship until the Bible says in chapter three of Esther, the Bible records something. The Bible says that, that Haman was very close to the king. He was connected with the king. 
they play cards, they, they, they lied, they drank, they did everything together. And, 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 and one day, uh, you know the story, hey man have been flattering the king until this point. He gets to the point where he feels he has the ear of the king. And in the king's drunkenness, he says to the king, I wanted to do me a favor. There is a group of people. These people don't regard the laws of the king. They, they, they are spread all over your kingdom. In fact, they are foreigners. They don't regard your precepts. And king, I want you to do me a favor. I don't want you to destroy that. I want to do it for you. And on top of that, I will even pay money into your treasury to destroy them. It sounded yeah. good to the king's ear. So the king called his tribes and his governors, called all of them, bring the writers, let him write a decree. When the decree is written, the king takes off his ring, his signet ring, his signature, and hand it to him and sign the decree. Him and do whatever you have to do. And the Bible says that the, the, the time of their destruction was set up on the day called Adar. Now you got to understand that day is the day in the Jewish culture that means a day of rejoicing. All right. And what's about to take place is that they're going to bring sadness in the day of rejoicing. We, we're going to turn this entire joyful day. Whenever the Jewish remember this day in their history, they will know that it was the saddest day that they ever walked on the face of the earth. The decree was given. We will kill every woman, every man, every boy, every child. We will kill everything. And then, and then you can take all of their possessions. And the king foolishly signed, gave his sickly ring. And when the letter has been sent to every province, every governor, everyone else, we have an emergency in the Persian kingdom. We have an emergency in the kingdom, in the king's kingdom. There's a kingdom that ruled the world at the time. In every province, there is an emergency. A, a historian said that his kingdom stretched all the way to India. So all the way down to the Indian Peninsula, all the way there, they're mourning the Jewish Ooh. folks because a day of destruction has been set. Think about it. Someone came to your country, take over your land, extract your minerals, subjugate you to slavery. And then they set up a day of destruction. But the, 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 the thing is, is that what God does is amazing. God knowing this ahead of time, planted Esther in the palace. You're not listening to me. God sees things ahead of time and positions his people in strategic places so that there will be a, a way of deliverance for his people, amen, somebody. Amen. If you're listening to me, wherever you're listening to, whatever position amen. you find yourself in a hospital, in the courtroom, wherever you find yourself on the job, God has placed you, strategically placed you in a position so that he can use you as a tool to deliver his people. Amen, somebody. Amen. He did not just place you there to get the money. The fame and the glory. No, he placed you there hey. for a purpose. I wish you're listening to the preacher this morning. He placed you there tonight, wherever you are. He placed you there for a reason. Don't be quiet while you are there. God wants to, wants to use you to bring glory and salvation, deliverance for his people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The problem is, when the letter has been given, Mordecai, Esther's uh, 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 uncle, is crying in the city. He wore sock clothes. Everybody crying, but Mordecai had hope. He said, my, 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 my little girl is in the palace. Mm. Friends of mine, I want to say this to us. A missed despair, there is still a gleam of hope somewhere. Hallelujah. You're not listening to me. 
a miss hardship tragedy, there is still a gleam of hope somewhere. As I was discussing with my friends, I said that even in death, God still wins. A miss yes, even sir. death, there is still hope because there will be a resurrection. A mm -hmm. miss sickness, there is still hope because it proves that there is a healer and there is a bomb in Gilead. A miss mm -hmm. imprisonment, it's, there is still hope because it shows that we have a God who can set the captives free. Mm. And so the law sent a word to Monica. Monica sent a word. Monica came to the king's gate. The problem is you could not wear sock clothes and enter the king's uh, court. So Monica stayed to the king's gate. A message is sent to Esther. Esther gets the word. We see someone in sock clothes and the person look like your father. Monica. Yeah. And Esther gets the word. And, and, and she doesn't know what to do. And Esther, scratching her head, doesn't know what to do. Now, said, so you, you know what? You know, my, my uncle has to, has to be dignified in this. So she sent call, calling for him. You see, many times we are rushing into giving solutions to people's problems when we have not even spoken to them. So true. Many times we jump into conclusion. Somebody said, ouch. When we, have, when we don't have a clue as to why their marriage fell apart, why their family had a crisis, why the child walked away, why the job has been taken away, we jump into conclusion without asking questions. And many times we want to offer selfish solutions. Mm. Monica said a word. Tell the queen, tell her, I will not accept these things from her. So she sent her trusted a, 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 a guy from the king's coast that takes care of her. And then and, and he said, Hi, Ty, go and talk to the queen and, and my, my uncle. See what's going on. He's my father. Talk to him. See what's going on. And then Mordecai explained all to the man. He went back and told Esther. Now when Esther got the word, Esther, first of all, entered into fear mode. Esther said, okay. the first thing she said, you know, yes, I'm the king, I'm the queen, I mean, but, but, but you gotta understand, for the past 30 days, I've not seen anyone going to the king except him, man. Two, the king have not even called me in as a queen for the past 30 days. Of somebody. And mm. then she remember that the laws of, of, of those days is that if you are the queen and you, even you can be the queen, if you've not been invited into the presence of the king and you show up, if the king did not raise his golden scepter, it meant you were rejected. And based on that, it meant mm. execution. Prison mm. sentence is hanging over your hair or death sentence. Is the back driving Esther sent a word back to Mordecai saying, uh, uh, Daddy, uh, uh, Uncle, I want you to understand this is the situation. And you know my hands are tied. Mm. But this morning I want to say to you, who told you your hands are tied? Who mm. told you you have no help? Who told you there is no way out? I told you at such a time as this one you've been called, who told you, I want you to understand you have the angels army that surrounds you. I want you to understand you have God that is your support. I want you to understand you have the whole of heaven on your side, wherever Amen. you find yourself. Amen. So Monica sent a word to her. saying, don't think because you are in the king's palace, and you think you're gonna survive. That letter said every Jew should be killed. Don't think you're gonna survive. And even if 
You refuse. I want you to understand you will have lost a great opportunity. You and your household will perish, but God will send deliverance for his people. Hallelujah, somebody. I want us to okay. understand that if we don't if we don't do what we're called to do, the rats will cry out. If we don't call, mm. if we don't do what we're asked to do, God will call another group to do what oh, he requires of us. If we refuse to go and let the perishing know that there is a savior, if we refuse to let somebody know that there is still a fountain filled with blood drawn from him, oh, if we refuse to let oh. sinners know that they can plunge beneath that flood and lose of their guilt to stain, God will call someone else to preach this everlasting gospel. Are you there with the preacher this morning? We are here. We are here. So, Brother Kasset, may I remind you, who knows that you are called for this time? <laughs> Well, you're not listening to the preacher. I get excited when I read that. It tells me that God goes ahead of his people. It tells me that we don't need to worry about the future. Preach on me. It tells me that while we are still thinking today, God has gone years ahead of us, put things in place. So when we get there, we realize that God had already been there. Hey. It tells me that when I get to my tomorrow, while I'm worried as to how it's going to turn out, God has already been the lawyer in the courtroom. I, I want you to understand, even when the decree has been signed, even when the letter has been signed, the prison sentence has been given, I know a God that is able to deliver. Hey, God is able. Oh, you're quiet on the preacher. I know a God. Wherever you are this morning, you can give a God, this God a hymn of praise. I know a God that is able. Mm. Esther said, Father, you taught me well. You taught me well, you taught me well. The Bible says they were weeping and wailing in the entire province around the nation and even in the city of Shushan, the capital city that was weeping and willing. The Bible says the nation was perplexed. They did not know what to do. Hey. But the Bible also mentions something. The Bible said prayer and fasting. Uh, you don't understand prayer unlocks heaven's door. When you don't have a way out, when you don't know a way out, I want you to know that when you get to your knees, when you talk to God, he's the God that answers prayer. Amen. When there is no hope at all, I know a God. Oh, well, I got to give you this story before I end now. My time is coming closer, but I got to give you this story. A few years ago, I got to run through it. A few years ago, I have traveled doing evangelistic meeting, preached 200 plus people, baptized, came back. And then my wife and I went to see the doctor and we got bad news. Oh. The first good news was that we, we were pregnant. We are happy. My wife is going to have a child. We are happy. And then, but on top of that, the doctor also gave a bad news. The doctor said to her, now the pregnancy you have, you have to make a choice either to live. Mm. Or to keep the baby and die. Oh. Emergency. And my wife came from the doctor's office. She had gone to the bathroom, washed her face after crying, came by, wiped her face. As I opened the door, she sat in the car. I closed the door. I recognized that something was wrong. As we were driving, she's quiet in the car for a moment. And then later on, she turned to me. She said to me, I beg, do you really love me? Mm. I said, oh yeah, why? She said, if you have to make a choice between the baby and I, what would be that choice? I said, there is no choice to make. We just came for a regular visit. She said, oh no, we, 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 we are pregnant. I said, thank God. She said, oh yes, yes, but, but there is more to it than that. I said, what are you talking about? She said, the doctor said that I have two weeks to decide if I don't, Decide within two weeks. If I decide to keep the pregnancy, 
I would die at the end of the pregnancy. Eesh. And if I keep the pregnancy, the baby will still be a human vegetable. And I said to her, what do you mean by that? She said, the baby would be useless. And as we drove, there was silence in the car. Then I broke the silence. I said to her, babe, I broke the silence. I said to her, now I, I, I want you to understand this. We are not going to get rid of the baby. And I'm not going to lose you. I'm going to keep you. And I'm going to keep the baby. I wish you listening to the preacher this morning. I said, we are called at such a time Amen. as this time Amen. to trust God, to obey his words, to take him at his words. And, and, and I remember that night we went home. Ooh. I left my wife home. I got in the car. Because you see, sometimes when you're going through crisis, you need to have a little talk with God by yourself. And I drove, I remember crying okay. in the car. Okay. I parked my car uh, by, 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 by the wayside and I stopped and I cried. And I said, God, I'm going to work my eyes now. But you promised in your word that you can deliver. And God, I've seen it because I preach around the world. I've been there with someone doctor declared dead. And I pray and they've come to life. I've sat by the bedside when doctor said they would never wake up. And they've woken up. I've been there before. I know that you've done it. Now it's my time. And I remember going back home. Went to bed. My wife, my wife woke me up in the middle of the night, said, babe, let's talk. She said, what have you decided? I said to her, babe, we're not going to get rid of the baby. And, we, we, and we're not going to lose you either. It's time for intense prayer. Friends of mine, when there is crisis at hand, instead yeah. of running from it, we need to talk to God. Amen. And friends of mine, at the end of this story, I want you to understand that I kept my son and my wife is yes, still sir. here with me. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Even though there was crisis along the way, but I want you to understand that God has been faithful. I want you to understand that even though there were death sentences hanging over the Jews' head, when Esther finally did her prayer and fasting and went to the king's palace, and she, she, they opened the gift for the queen. She dressed in her royal robe and approached the throne. And as, she, as they opened the gift for her, she walked to the palace and the king sitting in his, in his chair, in his, in his, on his throne. And he sees Esther from a distance, look and lifted his hand and he recognized it was his queen. Instead of keeping his hand down, he raised the golden scepter and Esther was allowed to come before the presence of God. Friends of mine, as I close this morning, I want you to understand that there was death sentence hanging over planet Earth and everyone thought humanity was going to be lost forever. The devil sat in life with his angel. They are doomed. But somebody step up. He said, if I perish, I perish. If I lay down my life, I will take it up again, but I'm going to be the appetite for humanity. I will go to the cross. I will lay down my life, and then my father will see the offering. He will lift up the golden scepter so that my people can be redeemed. And this morning, I want to say, lift up your hands, oh, he gets up. And be ye lifted up, you everlasting God, that the king of glory might come in. The golden scepter was lifted hey. so that you and I can be redeemed. Lord have mercy. Just that the Jews were saved. When the king lifted the golden scepter, salvation came. When Jesus died on the cross, the golden scepter was lifted. Yo. So that you and I, this morning, can understand that if we speak to him, if we get to know him, if we trust him, that mm. earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal. If we believe in him, that earth has no sickness, 
that heaven cannot kill. If we believe in him, the earth has no crisis that Jehovah cannot remedy. Jehovah is his name, for he is a mighty warrior, great in battle. Jehovah is his name. You've been called at this time. Like this. To intensify and send us, set up emergency prayer for God's people. Bow your heads with me. Father, Amen. thank you. Amen. For we love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for God wherever you are. Amen. Hallelujah.